when I was new to EVs, I had the typical newbie range anxiety. So I loaded up on all these different adapters and extension cords. Did I really need all of those? For most road trips, no. These days, if you have a vehicle with a CCS charging port, chances are for a road trip, all you'll need is one of these and one of these. We'll get a little bit into the details of why you need each one, when to use them, and how to get yours. One of the questions EV owners and advocates get asked the most by prospective EV owners is, are all the plugs the same? And the answer is, it used to be complicated, but the industry is quickly moving towards the point where we can say, yes, they are. One note here is that I'm addressing the North American market, not the rest of the world. I'm mostly going to focus on CCS charging point equipped vehicles. So that's pretty much everyone except Tesla. We will talk about the Tesla adapters as well, but they're kind of just the reverse of the CCS. Now that the Chatamo plug is pretty much going the way of the Dodo, sorry Leaf owners, I used to be one, I get it. We can pretty much talk about three different plugs. The J1772, the CCS or combined charging standard, and the Tesla or North American Charging Standard, or NACS for short. Since Tesla was an early leader in the industry, they developed their own charging system, including the ports, the plugs, and the network. However, it was proprietary, so the combined charging standard was developed, which incorporated both the DC and AC J1772 plug. While most of the industry is heading towards the NACS standard, most vehicles today that are not Tesla's in North America are still being brought out with the CCS charging port. Furthermore, there are lots of charging stations that use the CCS and the enclosed J1772 standard. So that's where it gets interesting. We do need to get into the technical weeds just a little bit because it has an impact on the different adapters. So bear with me or skip forward using the chapter markers at the bottom of the screen. The first thing we need to get out of the way is alternating current versus direct current, AC or DC. All batteries are direct current. There's a plus and a minus terminal, and so it is with EV batteries. The electrical grid uses AC power because it's much more efficient for long distance transmission. So somewhere in there, we have to do a conversion from AC to DC, which is also known as rectification. AC charging can be divided into level one and level two charging. Level 1 charging is simply using a standard household 120 volt outlet and then the other end feeds AC power into the vehicle. The vehicle then has an onboard charger or rectifier that converts that AC power to DC that the battery can use. Level 1 simply refers to the 120 volt low power that's usable from any standard outlet. Level 2 varies from level 1 only in that the power level is higher. Typically, a separate 240 volt circuit is installed that terminates either in a plug or is hardwired into the EVSE that then, again, feeds power to the car as alternating current. Again, the car then converts the AC to DC that the battery can use. In DC charging, the rectification process is handled offboard the vehicle. So if you notice at DC fast chargers like Tesla superchargers, you'll often see a little yard that's fenced off with some really big equipment. Now it's largely because the amount of power going through there, but also it's because that rectification is happening there so that what gets fed into the car is direct DC power, thereby bypassing the car's onboard charger. It's because of the different AC versus DC feeding into the car that the adapters are different. In AC charging, the vehicle uses part of these pins for the power delivery and the other part for the communications you'll notice that there are no two big fat pins on the bottom. For DC charging, you'll notice the top pins are gone on this adapter. You have the three pins up here for communications and the two big fat ones for the DC power delivery. The Tesla design uses internal switching for the AC to DC. So if you look at the adapter, you'll notice that the input for AC versus DC looks very much the same. So while the cable on a Tesla supercharger is much bigger, than a home chargers to carry the large amount of current, the plug itself is virtually the same. This compact and clever design is part of the reason that the industry has decided to go towards the NAX standard. Notice that plug-in hybrids typically do not have these big pins on the bottom. 
they only have the top part. This is the charge port of a Kia Niro plug-in hybrid. There are some notable exceptions like the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, which had both AC and DC charging. So if your charge port only looks like this, probably it's a plug-in hybrid or one of the early EVs that doesn't have DC charging. This is the charge port on my Kia Niro EV. This has the J1772 plug on the top. And when doing DC fast charging, the bottom dust cover comes off as well. For level two charging, the bottom dust cover can stay in and this can be used independently. Whew. All right, with all of that technical stuff out of the way, let's get into the actual charging and the use of the adapters. If you wanna charge a CCS capable vehicle on a DC fast charging network like the Tesla Supercharger or another one that uses NAX plugs, you'll need a NAX to CCS adapter. It looks something like this with a female NAX port and the male CCS port. This is the Electron Vortex NAX to CCS adapter. The main difference between this and the A to Z is it has separate latches. Here's the one for the CCS charge port. And then you have a button on the bottom to release the catch for the Tesla supercharger handle. This one did not come with a case, just a cardboard box. You can see this one already has a little bit of scuffing because I don't have it in a case and it's been in the back of my Kia Nero for some time. This is the A to Z Typhoon plug. This one is a little bit unique in that it has only a single button for the latches instead of two. So a short press or light press on this button will unhook this from the charge port of the vehicle. But in order to get this off of the Tesla supercharger plug, there's another little hook down here. And if you just press lightly, it doesn't come down. But if you press a little bit harder, it retracts. So remember that if you get the Typhoon plug and you're having trouble getting this off of the supercharger plug, press hard so that this little hook on the supercharger side retracts. Comes with a nifty little carry case, keep it dust free and from rumbling around in your frunk. I would tend to stay away from any cheap, low cost country sourced adapters that may or may not have the same internal high quality parts or over temperature sensors and things like that. In my opinion, you're just asking for trouble by going cheap. You're talking about a lot of power and amps that flows through these things. And the last thing you want is any kind of incident or fire. Both of these are rated for most EVs on the market today. You do want to check that these are 100% compatible with your vehicle. So you want to check the power specifications, the maximum volts, amps, and kilowatts of power. My understanding is that these are dumb, which means there's no software inside that needs to be updated for particular chargers. If your vehicle is open to charge on the Tesla supercharger network, like my Kia is, then these adapters should work for you. All you would need to do is to activate a session on the supercharger network, or again, other networks are out there now. I noticed Circle K charging is starting to put NAX plugs on theirs. I believe Electrify America is doing the same. Now, obviously they still have both plugs. So if you don't need to use an adapter, then don't use it. On the other hand, if somebody is already using the only available CCS plug and the NAX plug is there, then you can use this to start your charging session. When you're finished with a charging session, simply stop it using the app or the screen. Although all of these have hooks that go into the charging port and there's typically some kind of a limit switch in here, I would not advise using this as the primary method to stop the charging session. Think of this like pulling a fire hose off of a hydrant while it's still flowing. You wanna make sure that the flow of electricity has stopped before you pull the plug on this. So now let's talk about AC charging, particularly with a vehicle that has a CCS charging port. So one other question that comes up is, why can't I just use the CCS charging adapter to do AC charging? Because of the way Tesla does internal switching for AC to DC, but the CCS standard does not, you'll notice again that there are no pins on the top here for AC power delivery, and there are pins down here for DC power delivery. So these adapters are not made in such a way that there is internal switching based on AC or DC power. So you can only use this for DC charging. At least it's that way with the current crop of adapters. 
Now for AC charging, enter the NAX to J1772 adapter. Now, when would you use this? This is for hotel destination chargers, a person's home charger, or even the mobile cables. I recently went to a friend's house and delivered something to him, and he only has a home Tesla charger. So to charge up my zero motorcycle, which has AC charging, I needed to bring my own adapter since he doesn't have one. Tesla Tap was one of the earliest and most well-known NACs to J1772 adapters. In the meantime, many others have come out, and if you look on Amazon, you'll see there's a whole host of them. Once again, I would recommend a high-quality adapter like this one from A to Z. These are heavy-duty constructions with all of the internal wiring, properly sized thermal cutoff switches, and also this is a very compact unit, which is very nice. When, when I'm riding my motorcycle, I really don't want one that has a longer cable on it. The Level 2 A to Z Stellar Plug also comes with a little case. Comes with uh, locking keys. Just has the standard hook to unplug it from the charge port. And then the lock can lock it into place. There's a slider at the bottom to lock and unlock it from the Tesla charge cable. One of the most important things to check on a NAX to J1772 adapter is once again the specifications and ratings. Some of these are only rated up to 40 amps. Obviously they're all rated for 240 volts since that's what they're intended for. But there are some horror stories of people trying to charge a vehicle that has an 80 amp onboard charger and an 80 amp Tesla charger with a 40 amp unit, which this is then underrated and this thing melted into place and then had to be removed by the manufacturer. So don't do that. Look up your vehicle specifications in terms of the charger and the EVSE or wall charger, whatever you call it. Make sure that the adapter is at least rated for those specifications. A good example is my Zero Motorcycle can charge somewhere between 12 and 13 kilowatts peak. That's certainly north of 40 amps because 40 amps is 9.6 kilowatts. So I carry an 80 amp charger for my Zero Motorcycle. This thing is pretty beefy. It is rated for 80 amps. So no worries about not getting the right uh, amp rating for this particular adapter. There's also a clever little zippered and padded case so that this thing is not rumbling around in your frunk and picking up all kinds of dirt and dust. And yes, it will cost you a little bit more money, but this one here from A to Z, once again, is already rated at 80 amps, which is pretty much the maximum that I've ever seen for any AC charging in North America. To stop the charging session on a J1772 level two, you do simply just press on the button that releases the hook, which also activates an internal switch telling the EVSC to stop the flow of power. So in this case, there's no need to stop the charging session manually. As always, don't forget to take your adapter with you, reholster the NAX plug and practice good cable management so it's not on the ground. For Tesla vehicles, it's essentially a reverse. This is the Tesla branded CCS2 NAX or Tesla adapter. So this is for a Tesla that wants to charge on a CCS network plug. So the network plug goes into here. This end goes into the vehicle. This pin is depressed when it's fully seated into the vehicle to let the car and the charging station know that everything is seated correctly. My understanding is these are no longer available from Tesla. However, A to Z and Electron both have equivalents that are high quality and worth buying if you plan to charge your Tesla or other NAX vehicle on a CCS network plug. And this one will be no surprise to Tesla owners because it still comes with the vehicle. This is the J1772 to Tesla adapter. So this lets you charge from any public J1772 level two plug as well as any portable charge cable or other J1772 home charger. And then this end goes into your Tesla vehicle. So full disclosure, I am an A to Z affiliate. So I do earn from qualified purchases, but the plus side is there is a 5% discount code. Look in the video description or simply use code Carl Bloss. And just so you know, I did purchase both the A to Z and Electron adapters, including the AC adapters with my own money. None of the adapters I showed here today were provided by the manufacturer for any kind of review. I purchased them all with my own money.
So now you know, DC charging requires one kind of adapter, either NACs to CCS or CCS to NACs, and AC charging requires NACs to J1772 or J1772 to NACs. And yes, they actually do fit together if you needed some kind of an extension. In a separate video, I'm going to talk about mobile charging cords. And that's when the adapter discussion gets really interesting. So subscribe if you want to see that future video. Thanks for watching and stay charged up.